Now, as howling winds echo across the snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, the Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the delicious cereal shot from guns, in cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System, present by special recording, Sergeant Preston of the Yukon. <laughs> It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, breaking the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. And King, on you, Husky! <laughs> gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. And the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Our adventure will begin in just a moment. Some girls are content to follow the leader. Some girls want to be the leader. That's why more and more bright young women today are turning to nursing for a career. For professional nursing offers unlimited opportunity for women. And the need in top-level supervisory and teaching positions is great. If you're a high school graduate or college student between 18 and 35, and if you can qualify, a full fascinating career in nursing awaits you. Choose your own specialty from hospital staff research, nursing education, and many others. The field is fertile with opportunity for women with imagination and initiative. Perhaps you can qualify for a life of leadership, service, and, of course, security. Learn more about the exciting opportunities now open in nursing. Write to Nursing Careers in care of your postmaster or inquire at your nearest school of nursing. This message is brought to you as a public service. Fred Olson and his widowed mother had staked a small claim on the Bonanza Creek, a few miles from Dawson City. Fred had worked hard at the claim, but as time went on and winter approached, he became more and more discouraged. He had persuaded his mother to come to Dawson from Seattle, taking the small bank account they had to make the trip and to pay expenses until the claim began to pay off. But so far, the money had dwindled, and the take from the claim had been extremely little. One evening at supper, after Fred put in a hard day working the claim, his mother tried to encourage him. John, you haven't smiled since you came in. The winter's setting in fast now. I thought by this time I'd have stuck enough pay dirt to carry it over. We'll get through somehow, Fred. I'm sure that before long you make a strike. We run out of money. Food is high, and with the winter breaking on us now, what are we going to live on? Fred, perhaps we could get credit at the trading post to carry us until the claim does pay off. Why don't you take the dog team? Right now, and go into Dawson to the trading post. But if they should give me credit and I couldn't pay later, we'd lose a dog team and a claim, too. You've got to face it, dear. We certainly can't keep the dogs if we can't feed them or ourselves. It's a chance we'll have to take and then hope for the best. Well, all right, Mom. I'll go to the trading post and see what I can do. If they won't give me credit, well, I... I reckon the only other thing will be to sell what we have and get back to Seattle somehow. Fred hitched up the dog team and set out for town. Later that evening, he stopped in front of the trading post. Oh, oh, there! He stood for a moment, hesitating. He could see several men standing around the big stove inside as he gazed through the window. Well, here goes. If I don't get credit for this sunk. Hiya, mister. What can I do for you? I, uh, well, uh, I want to get quite a lot of supplies. Sure, sure. Now, if you just give me your list, I'll get them together for you in a jiffy. Oh, but first, uh, well, I can't pay right now. If, no. if, if you trust me until my claim pays off, then... Yeah, so that. Uh, but you'll get your money just as Look, soon. Look, it isn't that I'm hard-hearted or any, anything like that, mind you. 
But the first year of the rush, I got took for plenty by Chichacos, who promised to pay me off when they made a strike. Now, having myself to think of, too, I've made it a policy not to stake anyone who doesn't have a pay and claim. Oh, well, look, my name's Fred Olton. My mother and I have claimed 20 up in Bonanza. We have a dog team and sled and a cabin up there. If you could see your way clear in our Soon case... Soon I know where number 20 is located. It's one of them secondary claims back off the creek of the hill. Oh, well, that's right. Uh, Not one of those claims there have paid off, Olton. Sorry as I am to say it. Now, it would be better for you to cash in for the little you'd get on your dog team and cabin right now and save yourself a lot of grief. Winter's setting in. We couldn't get out of the territory even if we decided to. Especially if I sold a dog team. Sure, and a good many find themselves in the same predicament side the same. Well, I feel sure if you let me have the supplies that I'll make that claim pay off. Sorry, lad, but I just can't do it. Tis several useless cabins and bad claims I have on me hands already for unpaid accounts. Now, for a bit of grub to last a day or two would help you, I'll let you have it and work I'm it not I... asking for charity. Just forget the whole thing, mister. I'll find a way to get the supplies I want one way or another. With discouragement in his heart and his mind torn with frustration and unreasonable anger, Fred left the trading post and approached his dog team. For a few minutes, he stood near his sled, dreading to start back home with the disheartening news. As he stood there, undecided what to do, a heavy-set man came out of the trading post. Hello, Olden. My name's Jerry Strong. Oh, hi. How'd you know my name? I don't remember meeting you before, Strong. Oh, we haven't met before. I happened to overhear you talking to the storekeeper. Yeah. From what I heard, I figure things are kind of tough for you right now. I think. That's right. Well, if you think you'd be interested in making some cash, maybe I can help you do it. Just what would I have to do to get the cash you mentioned? I'd like to hire you and your dog team for a few hours tonight, that's all. But I'll pay you well for it. What do you want to hire me and the dog team for? Well, there's a friend of mine over in the cafe. I want you to take him and me a few miles up Wolf Creek a little later tonight. We have some business up there with an old prospector friend of ours. What do you say? Oh, it's late. Oh, it doesn't make any difference. We'll pay you $25 to take us there and back. $25? All right, I'll do it. Good. You meet us in front of the cafe in about half an hour. I'll see you then. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. Here's to wind up the pitch. The bases are loaded and... It's a two-bagger, and the game's tied up. Say, kids, come out to the ballpark as guest of a major or minor league team. Right now, you can see baseball games free if you are 12 years or younger. Just bring a paying adult like mom or dad, and you can get your free ticket immediately. No mailing, no waiting. Free baseball tickets are right inside packages of Quaker Puff wheat, Quaker Puff rice, and Muffet shredded wheat. In Quaker Paco 10, you get two free tickets. Names of the teams and dates of the games are on every ticket. Remember, the more packages of these delicious Quaker cereals Mom gets, the more free baseball tickets you get. So tell Mom you want to eat lots of Quaker puffed wheat or puffed rice, muffin shredded wheat, or Quaker Paco 10. And just think of the fun you'll have at the ball game, seeing real star players in person and cheering for home runs. Now to continue. A few minutes after Fred and Strong separated in front of the trading post, Sergeant Preston and his dog, King, came up the street and entered. Come along, King. <laughs> well, now, it's good to see you, Sergeant. And King, too. You haven't been around for the past two weeks or so. No, Mike. King and I just got in from a trip to Selkirk. I find I'm out of coffee, so I dropped over to get some. Coffee it is, Sergeant. Yeah, sure, that's all for now? That's all I can think of, Mike. Oh, uh, my credit's still good. Uh, that it is, for anything in the place. <laughs> uh, sure, and just a short while ago, a lad came in asking for credit through the winter. Sorry I was to have to turn him down. Anyone I know? Oh, that I can't say. His name was, um, oh, let me see. Oh, oh, yes, Orton, he said it was. Fred Orton. Has a claim up on Bonanza. One of those hillside claims that never seemed to pay off. 
Well, the young fellow and his mother will have the claim up there. It seems to me that was his name. Uh, like his not just the same chap. Dark, nice looking. Said he and his mother have number 20 claim. Yes, that is the same one. Uh, my conscience has been bothering me since he left, poor lad. He was that upset he went out and slammed the door behind him. I see. Things must be rather bad for them, then. Uh, that's right. He said they were out of money. But he still seemed sure he'd make a go of it if they could get through the winter. Sure, he looked so desperate when he left, saying he'd get supplies one way or another. It set me to thinking that it did. Mm, must be very hard hit. Yeah. Do you think you'll be heading out that trail any time soon, Sergeant? Why, Mike? Well, now, if you do, stop by and tell Orton I changed me mind. Oh? To come on in and get the supplies he needs on credit. Uh, the look on his face will haunt me all winter if I don't give him the credit he asked for. I'm glad you changed your mind, Mike. You'll not lose by it. He can now go up there in the morning and give them the news. Good. That'll be a relief to me, Mike. Well, I'm sure it'll be a relief to them, too. Good night, Mike. Good night. Come along, King. <laughs> Jerry Strong and his friend, Baldy, found Fred Olton waiting outside the cafe with his dog team as he promised. Hush! Hush! The three men set out along the well-beaten Wolf Creek Trail. The cold, gusty wind swirled the light, dry top snow in white, dusty clouds, obliterating any slight tracks they might have made. Sometime later, they stopped before a remote cabin. Oh, oh, Adam! Well, Olton, this is the place. Our uh, business is rather private. I wonder if you'd mind waiting outside for about five or ten minutes. Well, I guess I can stand it. If you're sure you won't be any longer than that. We won't. Don't worry. Come on, Baldy. Let's get inside and get this over with. All right. Fred watched as the two men went to the cabin and entered without knocking. For a few minutes, he heard nothing but the wind. And then his attention was attracted by the voice of a man raised in fear and protest inside the cabin. Oh, no! Get out of here! Yeah. A moment later, Fred was startled by the sound of a muffled shot. That shot was inside the cabin. I'd better go see what happened. As Fred reached the door, it suddenly opened and Strong barred his way. But not before he saw a sight inside that gripped him with a sudden fear. Get back to the sled, old man. Hey, that old man. Lying on the floor. You shot him. That's right, we did. I get back to the sled and make it fast. Oh, look, what is this, anyhow? Well, like Jerry says, or you might get a bullet, too. Get going. Put the sack of gold dust under the blanket on the sled, Baldy. Sure. You ride on the sled, Baldy. I'll follow along behind this dumpy Chaco and have my gun hand. Uh, hey, now I get it. You took that old prospector's gold and then murdered. You're getting a little smarter now, Olden. I'll start the dog team and go straight ahead. Uh, but, but that's going away from Dawson. I, I have to get back. My place is on Bonanza Craig. Don't be stupid. You're not going back. We're heading for Selkirk and you're going with us. After the threat you made in the trading post to get supplies one way or another... They'll blame you for what happened when you turn up missing. Now, get going. All right. Mush! Mush, your husky! Come on! Early the following morning, Sergeant Preston took King and went as he had promised to deliver Mike's message to the old He stopped at their cabin. Oh, King! Hi, your husky! Come on. Good morning, Mrs. Alton. You... You're Sergeant Preston. That's right. Oh, I just know you've come to tell me something has happened to Fred. What? Please, Sergeant, tell me what's happened to well, my boy. Mrs. Olton, I came here to see your son to bring him a message from the trading but, post. But, but Fred isn't here. He didn't come home last night. Oh, I'm so worried. I've been almost out of my mind. Well, I'm sure he's all right, Mrs. Olton. Mm. He was a little upset, I understand, because Mike at the trading post refused him credit, but... Oh, poor Fred. That was his last hope. But Mike changed his mind. I came to tell you and Fred that you may have all the credit you want. Oh, thank heaven. But, Sergeant, where can Fred be? Oh, don't worry. I'll try to locate him. Perhaps you'd better get your wraps and come to town with me. You can wait at the trading post until I find him. Yes, oh, yes, I couldn't stand waiting here any longer. I'll get my things and be with you in a few minutes, Sergeant. Oh, do come in. Thanks. Come on. <laughs> oh, uh, do you have something of your son's, a glove or something like that? Well, yes, of course. Here's a glove of his, but why do Just you in case I have to trail Fred, King will be able to get the scent from this glove. Oh. Now we'll get started for town. Come along, fellas. <laughs> You'll be warm enough under the blankets on the sled. Here, let me help you. You're so very kind, Sergeant. Thanks. I'll try not to worry. 
I'm sure everything will be all right. Up front, King. All right. On King. On you, Husky. Sergeant Preston took Mrs. Olton to the trading post and left her with Mike's wife. And then leaving his dog team outside, he and King went through town making inquiries about Fred Olton, but learned nothing. Finally, Preston stopped in at the constable's office. Hello, Sergeant. Hi there, Jim. Morning, Constable. <laughs> Do you happen to know a young fellow named Fred Olson has claimed 20 up on Bonanza? Well, I've seen him once or twice, Sergeant. Why? He came to the trading post last night. When he was refused credit, Mike says he looked desperate. As he went out, said he'd get supplies one way or another. He didn't get home last night. Mm. That's not so good, is it? No, it isn't. I'm worried about it. His mother's quite upset, too. They seem like fine people... Fred isn't the sort to do anything out of the way with what a man's in desperate circumstances. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. I can't figure out where he might have gone. He, uh... <laughs> I just thought of something. What? He was at the trading post last night. Probably left his dog team right out front. I have one of his gloves. King can get the scent from that. Then we can go to the trading post and see if King can pick up Olden's trail. Oh, say, that's a good idea. I'll come along with you. I'd like to see King in action. All right, glad to have you. Let's go. Come on, King. <laughs> A short time later, Preston and the constable stood in front of the trading post. Preston held out Fred's glove for King to sniff. Mm-hmm. Then he spoke a command. Find him, King. Find fella. <laughs> As the two Mounties watched, King put his nose to the frozen ground and circled around trying to find a scent that was similar to the one on the glove. <laughs> Suddenly, he barked eagerly, ran a short distance, then stopped and looked back, still barking. <laughs> He's found Olton's trail, Jim. Well, what do you know about that? After him, fella. Find him, King. On King! On, you husky! King headed along the main street. Reaching the cafe, he circled a few times and then started in the direction of the Wolf Creek Trail. Preston and the constable hurriedly followed King with a dog team and finally approached the old prospector's cabin. King had stopped there in seeming puzzlement. Then as the two men came along with the sled, the great dog turned toward the cabin and sniffed at the door. Oh, hurry, hurry, hurry. I'd say that Fred Olden went on up the trail, but stopped here at this cabin first. I'll go in and ask about him. Come on. Hmm. Doesn't seem to be anyone inside, Sergeant. Hmm, take a look, anyhow. What? Constable, look there on the floor. An old prospector named Drew. He was said to have quite a bit of gold here in his cabin. Yeah. He's done for all right. Shot through the heart. Constable, I'm going to go back to town. Take my team and sled and carry Drew's body. Well, all right, Sergeant. Now, don't say anything to anyone about our looking for Fred. You can now follow his trail until we find him and bring him back. Come on, boy. <laughs> all during the night and most of the following morning... Jerry Strong and Baldy forced Fred Olton to mush steadily onward over the frozen trail that led to Selkirk. During the few short stops they made for food and rest, Fred racked his brain to think of a way out of his predicament. But he didn't have a gun, and the two crooks were constantly on the alert. One or the other was always watching him with a gun ready for instant use. Finally, they reached a deserted cabin on the side of the trail and decided to make a prolonged stop. It was late afternoon when they made preparations to hit the trail again. Good thing we found that dried venison some of the cash here, Bully. We'll take what's left along with us. Yeah, we'll need it before we reach Selkirk. Oh, look strong. You've got this far. Why not take my dog team and let me make my way back? My mother's there waiting for me, and by the time I get back to Dawson, you'll be far away. Oh, you hear that, Bully? <laughs> Holden wants us to let him go back and tell the Monty's what he knows. <laughs> That's a hot one. But all you have is that small supply of dried venison here. It won't be enough for the two of you, much less for three. Selkirk's still a long way from here. What's more, the dogs will need some food or they'll give out. Hey, there's something to what you say, all right. But then you'll not make me go on with you? Nope, I reckon not. Hey, what's come over you, Jerry? As it is, the Mounties will be looking for Olton when they discover that dead prospector. But if Olton gets back to tell him the truth... He's got to search for us. Who said he was going to get back? I'm not that crazy. Well, but you said that... I said I decided not to take you along with us from here. In other words, Olden, dead men tell no tales. We'll 
continue our adventure in just a moment. Say, kids, wouldn't you like to be in the ballpark and see how a star pitcher makes the ball curve right over home plate? Golly, everything about a major or minor league game is exciting. Get in on that excitement. Come out to the ball game as guest of a major or minor league team. Walk right through the gate free if you are 12 years or younger and have mom or pop with you or another paying adult relative. It's as easy to get a free baseball ticket as going to the grocery store. Get it right inside packages of Quaker Puff wheat and Quaker Puff rice and Muffet shredded wheat. You get two free tickets inside Quaker Paco 10. Names of teams and dates are on every ticket. Golly, why wait? When Mom buys breakfast cereal, be sure she gets the kind with a free baseball ticket inside. That's Quaker Puff wheat or rice, Muffet shredded wheat, or Quaker Paco 10. Now to continue. In other words, Olden, dead men tell no tales. At Jerry Strong's words, Baldy looked meaningly at Fred Olden as he said... Oh, now I get what you mean, Jerry. You intend to give him the same as we gave the prospect. Oh, look, let me go. I, I promise not to say anything. The thing of my mother... You can think of it Baldy gets the meat ready to pack on the sled. After that, you won't do any thinking or talking. I'll take the dried venison out to the sled right now, Jerry. It don't do anything till I get back. I want to watch the fun. Look, if you shoot me, it'll be cold-blooded murder, Strong. I, I don't Save care. Save your wine until Baldy gets back inside. He'll enjoy it. I'm getting tired of holding this gun all the time anyway. Hey, Jerry. Huh? Hold it. There's somebody coming along the trail. Looks like a Mountie to me. Mountie, huh? We'll have to do some fast thinking. Baldy, when he gets here, you answer the door. See what he says. I'll stand back here and have the gun pointed right at the door. If he comes in, I'll let him have it. All right. Too bad we only got one gun between us. Once enough, don't worry. Holden, you stand over to one side so he won't see you when Baldy opens the door. Now get over there and keep quiet, understand? <laughs> if you don't, I'll... All right, I'll keep quiet. Now let the money in. We'll leave two of them behind when we set out for Selkirk. Meanwhile, Sergeant oh, oh, Preston, oh, oh, oh. with King running just ahead of him, approached the cabin. He saw the dog team waiting out front. And taking his gun in his hand, he approached cautiously as he saw King sniff his way right to the door. Oh, hello. I, I didn't expect to see a Marty. You live here? I sure do. I suppose that's your dog team. Yep, it's getting ready to go after more supplies. I'm looking for a young man named Fred Olton. Tall, rather dark. You seen him? No, nobody's been by here for several days. You lie, mister. Fred Olton came here and entered this cabin. If that's what you think. Why not uh, come in and look around? I shall. Step aside. As Sergeant Preston, with drawn gun, stepped across the threshold, Fred Olton yelled out a warning. Look out, Sergeant! Preston, who'd been keeping an eye on Baldy, even though the man didn't have a gun, momentarily gave his attention to the inside of the cabin. As the Molly stepped past him, Baldy grabbed for his gun arm, at the same time calling out to Jerry Strong. I'll grab him, Jerry. Use your gun. Hold it, you. Twisting aside, Preston lashed out with a slashing blow. As Jerry Strong, who had held fire a moment to avoid hitting Baldy, raised his gun. Fred Olden jumped in front of Jerry Strong's gun and took the first bullet intended for Preston. As Strong raised his gun for another shot at Preston, King, without waiting for a command, lunged forward, grabbing the killer by the arm and dragging him to the floor. Help the dog! Get him away! With him. Down, King. Down, fella. Good, King. Fred. Right. They planned to kill you if you came in. Then they were going to kill me. You took a bullet intended for me, Fred. Let me see that. Oh, I can fix that. Hit your right shoulder. They, they killed an old prospector and forced me to go with them. Oh, he lied. The whole thing was his idea. I'll take all three of you back to Dawson City. After we get there, we'll learn the truth about everything. Preston handcuffed the two crooks together, put Fred Olden on the sled, and started back to Dawson's. Fred's mother was told what had happened, and though she was relieved that her son had been found, she waited anxiously the next day while Fred was taken to the constable's office to be questioned with the two crooks. Later that afternoon, Preston with King and Fred entered the trading post where Mrs. Olden was waiting. Fred, is everything all right? We well, finally got the truth from the two killers, Mrs. Olden. I'm glad to say that Fred's been exonerated. Thank heaven. 
I just knew my boy wasn't guilty. I felt sure of that, too, when he took the bullet intended for me. If guilty, he wouldn't have done that. It was a mighty fine thing for him to do. <laughs> did you tell him the new sergeant? Uh, yes, Mike, he did. Oh, I'll make good at the claim. I heard something else today that makes me think you will, me lad. Two claims right next to yours have struck it rich. Hey. And with yours between the two of them, you can be sure there's gold there. Isn't it wonderful, Fred? Golly, it sure is. Of course, you'll, you'll have to dig for it. <laughs> but meantime, anything you want is yours. On credit. Now, do you get those men to tell the truth, Sergeant? Each one blamed the other for Drew's murder. Then they finally told the whole story. King saved the day at that cabin. You'd have had your hands full with the two of them. He's certainly a wonderful dog. To think because of him, Sergeant Preston was able to trail you and reach you in time. King knows we're talking about him. <laughs> that he does. <laughs> Sitting there with his ears perked up and sort of grinning like. <laughs> King's happy, I'm sure, Mike, because he knows things have turned out all right. This case is closed. <laughs> We'll return in just a moment with a word about our next exciting adventure. Young America keeps his musical knowledge up to date by listening to Phonorama Time, starring Johnny Desmond. Every Saturday, Johnny presents a roundup of the platters that are making musical history from coast to coast. In addition, he brings such outstanding big-name guests as Teresa Brewer, the Fontaine Sisters, and Bill Haley's Comet. Guest disc jockeys from every section of the country appear regularly to report to listeners on the top tunes in each of their hometown areas. And interesting teenagers appear on Phonorama Time to bring their viewpoints on what young America is thinking about and talking about in music and other fields as well. Everyone loves Johnny Desmond, and everyone loves his Phonorama Time show. So gather your friends and fellow music fans around this Saturday and every Saturday for the musical session you can't afford to miss. Phonorama Time, starring Johnny Desmond on Mutual over most of these stations. Sergeant Preston knows a strong organization protects the notorious Curly Taggart. He anticipates problems in this new assignment, but he can't foresee the grim peril that threatens not only himself, but also his dog, King, and some of his best friends. Be sure to hear this next exciting adventure. These Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Adventures are brought to you every Monday through Friday at this time by the Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Puff Wheat, and Quaker Puff Rice, the delicious cereals shot from guns. By special recording in cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System. They are a copyrighted feature of Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Incorporated. Created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, and directed by Fred Flowerday. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice. So long. This is Mutual, radio network for all America. America.